This portion of the news is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Those struggling with addictions to prescription drugs and heroin often seek care in emergency departments. However, the primary option available for emergency department staff is referral to addiction treatment services. A new study evaluated whether these patients would be more successful in seeking and staying in addiction treatment if they began effective treatment in the emergency department. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. Like others who have struggled with drug addiction, Michael McCorkin was no stranger to hospital emergency departments. I was literally just enslaved to my addiction and um, it was awful. These patients often seek care in the emergency department and uh, often are just turned away and not uh, directed to treatment. Doctors Gail D'Onofrio and David Feline from the Yale School of Medicine and co-authors enrolled 329 patients with opioid dependence from the emergency department at Yale New Haven Hospital. One group received a referral to drug treatment. The second group underwent a brief intervention and referral to treatment. The third group was started on buprenorphine a medication that helps ease withdrawal symptoms and drug cravings. This group also followed up in primary care for maintenance therapy. Once they came to the primary care center, we uh, organized their treatment and provided them that treatment for uh, at least a 10-week period of time. Those patients that were randomized to the buprenorphine group, almost 80% of them were in treatment at 30 days. And this is twice the number uh, who will re be engaged in treatment if they simply receive a referral to treatment. We also found that um, those patients that were assigned to the buprenorphine group used less illicit opiates. Michael says one of the biggest concerns he and others faced was waiting to get into treatment. If you go to the emergency room and they'll treat you immediately versus waiting, then it's an asset. Michael has been in recovery for six years and is now studying business management. I've never seen such a bright future and uh, I never knew that I had it in me. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. Thanks, Catherine. In order to provide buprenorphine, emergency room physicians must complete extra training on opioid dependence and receive a special waiver from the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency. Beatty resident's Tamara Node has been taken into custody after a domestic dispute. According to the report, deputies were dispatched to a residence for a woman who allegedly ripped the shirt off her husband and choked him. The woman, identified as Tamara Node, began yelling at the couple's 13-year-old daughter for not washing the dishes while allegedly throwing a dinner plate at the child. The husband attempted to take the kids to the park, but Tamara wouldn't allow it, according to the report. The fight allegedly started over dirty dishes and no food food in the refrigerator. Tamara has also been charged with resisting arrest and other offenses. She was taken into custody after a scuffle with police and transported to the Nye County Sheriff's Office Detention Center. Lucas William Genre was arrested by Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies who were dispatched for a report of shots fired on Malibu Street. According to the report, Genre suspected someone of stealing from his property. He took his gun, according to police, and drove off on his moped and fired some rounds from the Ruger 44 caliber revolver at a nearby occupied residence. He said it was his quest for justice. Residents reported that they had a shattered window. Bullet fragments were also discovered nearby. Deputy Deputies initiated a traffic stop and found Jean Ray had a holster fixed to his right hip and a Ruger 44 caliber revolver sitting unholstered by his feet. According to police, he admitted to the crime and was arrested. There was a second break-in at the Cancer Victims Thrift Store on West Street. Well, at 2 a.m., some people said that they saw some people stealing off the patio and they had dollies. Yeah. wheeling stuff down the street, down the main streets, <laughs> on dollies, all the furniture in front. And then when we got in the morning, the furniture store door was kicked in. <laughs> no, but we're going we're gonna to do some different things that, you know, will probably stop all the robberies. We're going to have some surprises so for people now that... Explosion? You know, all kinds of stuff's going to happen when they come on the porch or they step a foot on the property after hours. You know, we've got to stop this. This worked 
six hours on fixing the, the you know, the damage from uh, the fifth, the other days, the robbery from the other and it's day. it's costing hundreds of dollars and these this, doors being fixed all the time. Yeah, we, you know, we want to put our time into the people, not fixing the, the buildings up. So we're going to, we're going to do some things that now we can catch the people and stop it. Because people need to know that when items are dropped off here on your property, it is actually theft to remove them. Yes, if they come on our property after hours, anything is on the property is theft. And the cops will arrest. They're, they're, they just said anybody sees anybody in the front, call the cops, and they're going to arrest them. And I they, mean, they're just not playing and anymore. And they won't be involved in it. All they do is call the cops, say, hey, there's somebody on the patio, and then they'll come down and take care of it, and they'll call us. And so anybody who sees anybody at this location on 2nd and West Street after hours, which is after 5 o'clock? Uh, four. Four o'clock. Yes. That uh, they just need to call the police and let them know. So is there any leads on who broke into the building here? Um, no. I I don't know. I don't know what the guy or the people um, Cause described. There, were, there was people here previously, and uh, we had the cops called to get them out of here, and we don't know if it was they came back and kicked in the door or somebody else did. We and it was, it, it was a guy, a girl, and a dog, and a dolly. Wow. Walking down the main street. <laughs> With furniture. <laughs> With furniture on the dolly, yes. That's shocking. Um, so if anybody has any information about this, of course, they're urged to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office, 751-7000. And uh, uh, as far as, um, you know, the new security measures that are going to be taken here, we need to remind everybody once again that if you drop off items here, we'd prefer it done during... Business hours. Please, during business hours, which are Tuesday through Saturday, 8 to 4. And then um, if you do have to drop it off, uh, please uh, make sure that uh, that if you see anybody else here that's removing items that you call the police. Absolutely. Yeah, or they can call us or contact us on our Facebook page. If they have something, I will come down and open the store for them to drop it off. And we have people that are watching the building. I mean, they're watching and they, they were seeing people taking things, but they didn't know. So now they know they just dial 911. The Nye County Animal Shelter has two months left to come up with short-term funds before the county cash drives up. They're looking into some of the fees and civil penalties to help with the funds needed, as well as the possibility of county-wide sales tax and parcel assessment fees to help long-term. They no longer have the shelter open to the public and no funds past the next two months to run the facility as it is. They may have to completely close. The annual budget for running the shelter full term is $285,000. The shelter is currently missing out on sixty dollars to $70,000 in adoption fees. Members of the Nye County Animal Advisory Committee also proposed reviving adoption fees and getting money from licenses. When we return, we're going to tell you about this weekend's car show.